in this lecture, I will be talking about surface and volume integrals. Okay. And uh, this is another way of doing a vector integration, which is slightly different from the line integrals that we saw earlier. And I will just be mentioning these and, uh, and just mentioning a couple of theorems. Okay. I would not be spending too much time on these, okay. but uh, I, just, I just wanted to mention them for completeness. Okay. So, what is a surface integral? Surface integral is actually very similar to a line integral. Only thing is, uh, you are integrating instead of integrating over a line, you are integrating over a surface. Okay, so so uh, now in this case, in this case, uh, a surface is a two-dimensional object, so it will be a two-dimensional integral. And so instead of just having a dx or a dy, you'll have an integral over something like dx dy. Okay. So, so what are the different surface integrals that you can have? So, you can define them in, di in different ways. I will use the most common, common way in which we will be talking about surface integrals. Suppose you have a vector field V of x, y, z. Okay. So, it has, it has three different components. Okay. Okay. Then you can define your surface integral as integral V of x, y, z. Sorry, not x, y, z. I just want to take. Okay, yeah, yeah. We can take x, y, z. Okay, and you dot it into d sigma. Okay, so d sigma, and you integrate over some surface S. Okay, so so this is the surface element. Okay, it is a vector. So it is something like this. So so just. This is a like it will be a small region okay, of, uh, of the surface and it is a vector it points. So, so it points along the normal along normal to surface. Okay. So, so in other words I can write d sigma as d d s okay s is a s is an area element times n hat n hat is a normal vector so this is an area element this is a normal vector okay so so and the range of integration is the surface okay so you integrate over a surface s Okay, so so just pictorially, I'll show you what what you mean is uh, you are you are you have okay okay so 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 if you have x y z space okay now you have a vector field okay vector field v is defined at each point so you have these vectors defined at each point in in the space now uh, suppose you want to do, do the integral over some over some surface. So, if you if you want to integrate this vector field over this surface, okay, over this surface, this is my surface uh, denoted by S. Okay, so suppose I want to integrate this vector field vector field over this surface S. Okay, then what I imagine is I imagine taking some small element of the surface, okay, and uh, and in this for the small element there'll be a normal vector n hat, okay, n hat that points normal to the surface. Okay. Now, the vector field v at this small element, okay, you will have a vector field that points in some direction v. It, it points in some direction and, and it has some, some uh, magnitude. So, so, if this point, if this point is uh, r, okay, which is given by x, y, z, okay, then v of x, y, z is a, is a vector at this point that points in some direction. Now, now there is also this element of the surface also has a normal. Okay, now you take a dot product of these two, and you do this for each little element. So you do this for each little element, and you integrate over the entire surface. You add them up, you will get the integral. Okay, so 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 this is a surface integral. Now notice that uh, that this d d sigma equal to d s n hat. And this d s is an area element, and typically, what will appear, depending on the problem that you're doing, you'll have a you'll have an area element that includes 
uh, it includes something like dx into dy. So, it will have uh, something like ds, dx into dy, not exactly equal to, okay, but it will have something that appears like a dx dy. So, so, so involves a product, two integrals. Okay, so, in general, if you want to calculate a surface integral, you have to do two integrals, one over dx and one over d, dy. Now, in certain cases, you might use spherical polar coordinates. So, instead of dx dy, you go to dr d theta and so on. Okay. But the basic idea of a surface integral is that since you are integrating over a surface, surface is a two dimensional object and so your integral will have, you will have to do two integrals. Okay. So, uh, I would not talk too much about this in detail. Okay, but uh, but uh, you will do some problems later on that involve these integrals. Okay, so so uh, now now we have talked about uh, line integrals. We have talked about uh, surface integrals. So the naturally the next thing to do is to talk about volume integrals. Okay, so that will be the next thing. Now now here what you have is. Uh, you can uh, now 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 here what I'll do is uh, I'll I'll look at uh, scalar field. Okay. Uh, now now before I go to volume integrals, let me just may emphasize one thing. Now notice that uh, that uh, v here the way I, ha I have defined the surface integral. Okay. V is uh, this. This is my surface integral. This is one definition of the surface integral, and uh, this is one popular definition. Okay, so v is a vector. D sigma I have chosen it to be a vector. So v dot d sigma is a scalar. Okay, so so whatever I'll get will be a scalar, and so my result will be a number. Okay, so so uh, now for volume integrals, what we'll do is we'll start with a scalar field. Okay, now my scalar field. Let me call it uh, scalar field uh, psi of x, y, z. Okay. So, 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 if I take a scalar field psi of x, y, z, okay, then uh, what I want to do is I want to do an integral over psi of x, y, z over a small volume element, okay, over a volume element and I might integrate it over some volume v. Okay. So, what does this mean? So, again, again we go to our picture. So, this is our space x, y, z and you might have some, you might have some volume that is shaped like this. I mean, I am just showing some arbitrary shape just to emphasize that, you know, you do not need to have very symmetric shapes. You have some volume v. Okay. So, this is, this is my volume v. And you might have some now, 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 now imagine that within this volume V, you take an infinitesimal volume element dV. Okay. Now, your scalar field, so if this point is, uh, let us say, let us say this point is, uh, is x, y, z, then the scalar field at this point is psi of x, y, z. So, what I do is I construct all these little little volume elements, okay. I add all of them up, okay. I, 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 I calculate the psi at each of these each of these little volume elements, I add it up and I will get an integral over, I uh, will get this volume integral. So, what is important about this? So, what is important is that dv, okay, is a volume element. Okay, it is a volume element. That means you are integrating over an entire volume. Okay, now a volume element typically has it's a three-dimensional object, so it has uh, something like dx dy dz. So you have to do three integrals. So three integrals have to be done. Okay. So, so now uh, now uh, so. In general, in general, you can you can write this in different ways. So, so sometimes instead of instead of dv, okay, you can use the the symbols used vary. 
So, d v, so notations. So, the commonly used notations are d v or d r vector, ok. Again, again the d r vector is used to define uh, to, to, to say uh, volume integral, ok, or you can use uh, or you can use d cube r, ok, without a uh, without a scalar sign. So, or you can just say d x d y d z, d x d y d z is if you are using Cartesian coordinates, ok. So, in other coordinates, if you are using different coordinates, ok, you can always use, uh, uh, you can use, I uh, will put a j d r d theta d phi, ok. So, so, so if you are using spherical polar coordinates, you can use dr d theta d phi. There is a factor that comes here, ok. Uh, this is called the Jacobian, ok, of the transformation, but uh, you know we will come to that a little later, ok. But basically, you need to do three integrals, ok. In the and uh, you know this is in spherical polar coordinates. Okay. And uh, in particular for spherical polar coordinates, j is basically r square sin theta dr d theta d phi. Okay. So, so I mean there are, di there are different ways to write this volume integral okay. and uh, often, often you will find that, uh, that this notation okay, based on what kind of region you have, how you can specify your v, you choose the appropriate coordinate system. Okay. So, uh, that is how much I want to say about uh, vo vo volume integrals. I just want to mention one thing that volume integrals you see them very often in quantum mechanics, ok. Now, uh, suppose, suppose you have a, a particle in three dimensions like a, let us say, let us say a hydrogen atom, ok, a particle in 3D, in 3D. So, for example, uh, electron in hydrogen atom, ok. So, now this electron is defined by a wave function psi which is a function of r, ok, which uh, most conveniently is written as, uh, as a function of as a radial part that depends only on r on, on the r and a uh, angular part that depends on theta and phi, ok. So, so most con this angular part is denoted by y and that is called the spherical harmonic and the radial part depends only on r, ok. So, so r theta phi is the coordinate system that you that you are using, ok. Now, any property you want to calculate, any property you want to calculate involving psi of r, ok, involves integrals. So, so suppose you want to calculate, uh, calculate uh, let us say, let us say uh, average average value of observable A in state psi, ok. So, so, so when your, when your electron is in state psi, ok, then what is the average value of observable, of some observable A, ok. Then what you do is you denote it as average value of A, expectation value of A and to do this what you do is you calculate an integral, ok, and that integral that you calculate is psi star, ok, of r and then you have A an operator operating on psi of r and then what you have is d cube r or dr or dv, ok. So, this is a volume integral. Okay. And what is done typically in such cases is, uh, is, is you separate this into two parts, ok. You separate this into a radial part and you separate it into an angular part, ok. And uh, what is done is depending on the observable, ok. So, so, so what is done is you write this as two integrals. You write this as an integral over, uh, over uh, of psi star or let me write it slightly differently. So, my psi is written as a product of 
of this radial part and an angular part okay so uh, so you will have r star of r okay and you have y star of theta phi okay and uh, now uh, you have this operator a okay and you have y of theta phi and you have sin theta d theta okay d phi and you have an this multiplied by r of r r square dr so now just look back in the previous thing what i said is that your dx dy dz or dq bar is r square sin theta dr d theta d phi that is a property of spherical polar coordinates so in spherical polar coordinates you have this r square now r square will only look at the integral over r it 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 does not affect the integral over theta and phi so so r this capital r and r and the little r square they do not affect the integrals over theta and phi so so you can break up this integral in this way okay and this is something that you routinely do and uh, you know whenever you calculate properties in quantum mechanics for three dimensional systems then you have these volume integrals so it's something that you that you get used to doing very uh, routinely in quantum mechanics okay now next uh, we'll just talk about uh, green's theorem all this is also known as uh, gauss divergence theorem okay and this is very useful when you want to convert an integral a uh, 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 integral between a surface integral and a volume integral and vice versa okay so so what does this say suppose suppose you have this x y z okay and uh, let's say you have some volume v okay so so you have some volume v okay and uh, this volume the the surface enclosing this volume is s so s is the surface enclosing volume v okay so s is a surface enclosing volume v okay then you have a nice theorem okay which basically says that uh, if you have an integral over a surface of a vector field dotted into d sigma which is the usual surface integral okay you can write this as an integral over a volume okay so 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 here you are doing an integral over two dimensions okay so now you are you are making it a 3d integral okay and uh, what you have is instead of instead of v you have a divergence of v and d dq bar okay so so this this allows you to go from volume integral to surface integral okay this, this again is extremely useful i mean uh, volume integral involves all these points in the interior surface integral involves only only a points on the surface now in some cases it's very easy to calculate the it's much easier to calculate surface integrals than volume integrals so you'll use it in the reverse way so so if you have a complicated volume integral then 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 you'll calculate the then, then you'll convert it to a surface integral in other cases the surface integral might be difficult to do and it might be easier to write the the volume integral so based on your problem okay you can go from surface integral to volume integral and vice versa this is known as gauss divergence theorem okay now obviously you might ask okay is there a way to go from surface integral to line integral okay and uh, the answer is yes you can go from a surface integral to a line integral okay so uh, that is that is what is called a stokes theorem helps you to go from a surface integral to a line integral okay so so in this case you can write suppose you had a vector field v v okay then uh, you can write your integral over over some curve a line integral of v in the following way i'll just uh, i'll just mention this again what is c and what is v so so you have 
x, y, z, you have some surface, okay, uh, surface S, this is S, S is the surface and I uh, will just mark this, this contour or this curve that is enclosing surface C. So, C is, is a contour that encloses the surface S. So, so, C is a contour that encloses a surface S. Okay. So, 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 and notice that it, in, it, it's a closed contour. Okay. So, it's a closed contour. I'll just mark it with a, with a closed loop here. Okay. So, C is a closed contour that encloses a surface S. Then this line integral, okay, can be converted to a surface integral, can be converted into integral over S. And uh, what you have, what you have is something dot D sigma. Okay. So, D sigma is a usual, usual surface integral element. Okay. And uh, what you have here is the curl of V. So, curl of V is a vector, this dotted into d sigma will give you a scalar. Okay. So, so you have a scalar here and a scalar here. Okay. So, so in this way you can convert a surface integral to a, to a line integral and vice versa. You can con convert a, a integral over a closed contour to an integral over the surface that is enclosed by the contour. Okay, uh, this is again, and uh, I mean there are a lot of uh, subtleties in this. Okay, um, and uh, you know this this can be done, and this uh, uh, this is a very powerful theorem. This is called Stokes theorem. Okay, and uh, these are extremely useful in uh, especially in continuum descriptions when you describe things as functions of variables of space. Okay, so then then these are very useful to do. Okay. I am just mentioning these for completeness. I okay. will also mention one thing that, uh, that both, uh, both uh, Gauss divergence theorem theorem and Stokes theorem okay. So, both these are, uh, are in some ways related to or uh, related to to what is known as uh, integration by parts okay what i what i mean to say is that is that these are some sort of some sort of versions of integration by parts. Okay, so they are some way related to integration by parts. In fact, in fact, if you look at standard books and see how they prove Green's theorem and how they how they prove the Gauss divergence and Stokes theorem, they do use the method of uh, what you have learnt about integration by parts. Notice notice that you know in an integration by parts, uh, I mean you have one term that has a derivative and one term that does not have a derivative, and in the other case, the derivative is shifted to something else, right? So, uh, uh, these are these are exactly manifestations of that for for uh, inti for vector integrations. Okay. So, so I will stop here with uh, the discussion on vectors. In the next class, we will start discussing about matrices.